father. When can I leave to be on my own? I've got the whole world to see. Main antagonists are very important. They are without a doubt one of the most important aspects of fictional stories. In fact, they're one of the main reasons why the main protagonist has a purpose in the story. Sympathetic villains are my most favorite type of villains. I mean, the fact that I can actually agree with the villain's intentions is mind-blowing. Making a sympathetic villain is hard work. I believe the main goal is to make the audience feel bad, or at least understand the villain's actions by making a reason, and by making the villain's reaction to that reason understandable. In my opinion, the writers of Miraculous Lady Trash did a terrible job with Gabriel Agress aka the sympathetic villain of the series. Pff, I'll be the judge of that. Throughout the entirety of Season 1, Hawkmoth is just doing evil stuff, and Gabby is merely being a mysterious, heartless fashion designer who didn't really have any time for Adrian. We never see any reason why Gabby acts like this and why Hawkmoth does these things until Season 2. In the episode The Collector, it is revealed that Hawkmoth is Gabriel Agrest. Since then, the audience, including me, are thrilled to know why the hell he's doing all these things. It is officially revealed in Style Queen. He's doing evil stuff just to save his wife, who was supposedly dead or maybe in a very severe coma. I wonder what would happen if Gabriel kissed her. So that is his reason for being evil. Honestly, I think it's a great idea, giving the main villain of Miraculous Ladybug more character depth. Because back then, he was nothing. He used to be a mere plot device who does bad things, only for the sake of making the superheroes do superhero work. Nothing more, nothing less. Giving him a reason to why he's doing bad things is a smart move by the writers. But is this a good enough reason to make his bad actions understandable? Yeah, I think so. If only it was done properly. The problem is that it is hard to believe that Emily is Gabby's motivation for being a bad guy, when considering the fact that Emily herself is so underdeveloped. To this day, she still is. I'll admit it, I used to care so much about Emily. I used to be so desperate in knowing more about her story of how she ended up like this. They did a pretty good job setting up the mystery of Emily aggressed by leaving hints and vague clues. I found it while I was on a trip overseas with my wife. I've never seen another copy of it. As I've watched Emily falling deeper into an endless sleep, my sadness for her has deepened too. My mom used to have dizzy spells, just like Natalie. My father said those weren't serious either. <sighs> it's been a year today since mom went away forever. Unfortunately, I stopped caring after the Gabriel Agrest episode. That was the last time I ever cared about Emily. And you want to know why? Because it's been four f seasons and we still don't get any logical information about her. Instead, we just get more vague explanations, which I'm honestly getting sick of. Tell me this, do you still care about her? Comment down below, let me know. Due to the fact that Emily is extremely underdeveloped, I ended up believing that she is not really that important anymore. I don't even consider Emily as a character at all. She's just a boring plot device who exists in this story only to give Gabriel a reason to be a bad guy. Chloe has a much better incentive for doing bad things. Yes, I admit it. I'm willing to forgive Chloe for nearly killing people in the subway, not being able able to be loved by the person that is supposed to be loving you is something that really makes you think and act irrationally. Chloe's mother neglecting Chloe her whole life is a vindication that actually works and you want to know why? One, it's comprehensible. Two, her reason has been fleshed out. And three, we actually see her reason physically appear in an episode. We actually get to witness Audrey treating Chloe like nothing right in front of our eyes, making Chloe's rationale all the more intelligible. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. I'm not actually willing to forgive Chloe for doing that, if she is a real-life person who nearly murdered innocent people IRL. But no, she's just a fictional character who did a bad thing that makes rational sense. That doesn't make her a great person, but it sure does make her a great character. I don't think I can say the same thing for this guy. So far, the one and only assertion to why I should accept his bad actions is Emily's death. Grief is never a good reason to do bad things, because to quote Rocket the Raccoon, everybody's got dead people. It's no excuse for any bad thing you have done. His pretext overall sucks. Or maybe it can be good if it gets a crystal clear justification. But no, we don't get any of that. The explanation of his wife's death is nowhere to be found. All we get are blurry clues. Not to mention, we never really get any episodes that showcases Emily as an actual character. We never see any flashbacks of her interacting with Gabriel and or Adrian. We never really get to know if she was a good person or not. Keeping something a mystery is fine as long as it's the whole point. But in this case, I don't think so. I think we are supposed to find out the truth. That's interesting to know. But if you're planning on holding it back until the very end, do you really think that I would still care? So please tell me why. Tell me why. Tell me why I'm supposed to believe that this is a good assertion for Gabby's bad actions since it's so freaking underdeveloped. Because the narrative says so.
it is time for the main event. Let us now get to why this moron is most definitely not a sympathetic villain. Gabby's ambition is bad enough, but believe me, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Let's take a deep dive, maybe not that deep, at episodes where Gabriel sucks balls as a father and as a villain. And keep in mind guys, he's supposed to be a sympathetic villain. The Bubbler. In this episode, Adrian's birthday is transpiring. He never had a birthday party before, so he is asking for one, but his father won't allow it. And how old is Adrikins in this episode? I'm sure he's above 12 years old. He is way beyond living his childhood. And according to this episode, he never had a party for every single one of his B-days. And it's all because of his father being so overly protective and controlling. That just makes me want to bring up the biggest question ever. Tell me why. Even at the end of the episode, he didn't bother to acknowledge the fact that his one and only ray of sunshine never had a single birthday party in his life. At least give him a present, dude. And that's exactly what he did indirectly. More so, he wouldn't make the effort of making time for himself for the sake of his son's birthday. Gabriel instead commands Natalia to give Adrian a present. It's like he doesn't care about his son at all. Is that bad enough for you? Well, I've got news for you. I've got news for you. It's just the beginning. Here are more episodes where Gabby sucks even more than Butters' dad. In Captain Hard Rock, I hate that name so much. Captain Hard Rock. Anyway, Gabby won't let Adrian practice with his friends, even though he promised. His assertion is that Adrian's performance suck, which is probably due to their influence. Or maybe Adrian made a mistake because of you, you d You are making him nervous. You are being manipulative. So please tell me who is to blame for Adrian's mistake. Please tell me. The Collector. In this episode that I might consider kinda disturbing, especially for a kid's show, after finding out that Adrian stole the book and lost it, Gabby akumatizes himself. Who is his target? You think you take it out on his own son? Uh-uh. 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 Uh. After being defeated, Gabby says sorry to Adrian and says that he can't keep him locked up forever. He allows him to go back to school once again. That's nice. But you know what's not nice? After this, he goes back on being Hawk Moth, while ignoring the fact that he actually tried to destroy his own son, and the fact that he might put his son in danger once again. And the only reason why I should believe this is, Oh, my wife is dead. Kiss my balls, asshole! The list of episodes where Gabby sucks goes on and on and on, but let us take a look at the four episodes where, in my opinion, Gabby is at his very, very worst. Queen Wasp. Gabby officially quits being Hawk Moth because his magnum opus got defeated. He can't keep putting his child in danger. And he has done everything he possibly can. He goes outside after a long time and hugs Adrian. And they lived happily ever after. Say he immediately goes back being Hawk Moth. All because he sees an opportunity to akumatize Chloe and defeat Ladybug and Cat Noir. You said you were going to stop. I can't give up, Natalie. I miss her too much. Excuses! Excuses! How am I supposed to trust you when all you give me are excuses? When are you gonna learn that your actions have consequences? Consequences that affect other people! Like me! This leads me to believe that maybe, just maybe, Chloe's redemption arc really wasn't meant to happen at all in the first place. Maybe this event transpired not for the sake of Chloe, but only for the sake of making Gabriel remain as Hawk Moth for the entire show. It was never about Chloe, it was about him. And that is what I call lazy writing. What if Chloe never found to be miraculous? What if Ladybug saved the day without the need of going to Master F*** to use a miraculous? Would Gabriel actually stay on the path of giving up the supervillain role? Would he start to be a good parent to Adrian? Huh? Cat Blanc. I've already talked about this episode twice, but let me do it one last time. To be honest, I actually like the whole irony of Gabby doing all of these things for his family, but he is unknowingly fighting his own family all along. This can lead to some fascinating drama, if it's executed properly. But nope, instead, we get to see one of the most dreadful, abominable, shuddersome, distressing, monstrous, formidable, god-awful moments in TV show history. After finding out that Adrian is Cat Noir all along, we all know that he is never going to stop being Hawk Moth, so what does he do? Does he attempt to snatch Adrian's ring while he slumbers? No, he instead abuses Adrian emotionally, all while mentioning his dead mother to prove he's not wrong. He akumatizes him and caused the end of the world. Party. Feel free to prove me wrong, but I think this showcases that Gabriel hates Adrian. Come on, prove me wrong. I dare you. And remember, family is his reason for being a supervillain. I'm doing it for her, Adrian. For you. For us. Then why in the love of God do you treat your family like then? Huh? Is this supposed to be ironic? Is this intentional CA for Gabby? I don't 
No, but what I definitely do know is that, believe it or not, this stupid episode actually tried to blame Marinette for what happened to Adrian and the world, which honestly doesn't make rational sense. I mean, sure, what she did was incredibly stupid and creepy, but she didn't directly cause the end of the world, dude. It is all Gabriel's fault, and that's pretty much common sense. Who should we blame for Abraham Lincoln's death? The person who gave John Wilkes Booth a gun? No, we should blame John Wilkes Booth himself. Same goes for this episode. Blame Gabby for everything because he's the one who caused it, and he is most definitely not excused for what he has done. His motivation does not work at all, since it doesn't make rational sense. It especially doesn't work for this episode. In fact, Cat Blanc pretty much destroys the purpose of his motivation. He's doing this for his family, and yet he willingly treats his family like garbage. I honestly don't know what he wants now. Well, I think I kinda do. Dearest family, I'll just let it speak for itself. I'll destroy this world that took you from us to build a new one, where we'll never be apart again. Now, I know you might be saying, Oh, Cyrus, it is already explained in a later episode. What he said makes rational sense. That's exactly what the Miraculousness does. If someone makes a wish, the world will end. I'm not talking about the explanation. I'm talking about... <sighs> Did you even hear what he f said i'll destroy this world that took you from us to build a new one where we'll never be apart again he's planning on destroying the world willingly he doesn't care about the fact that he's going to kill everything and everyone even his son why the f would i sympathize with that tell me why <laughs> Ephemeral. I refuse to talk about this episode again. I'll discuss this part only. After Gabby uncovered the truth in the most nonsensical, stupid way possible, no exaggeration, what does he do? Does he finally realize his wrongdoings and actually stop being a villain for good? No! It is once again Gabby willingly taking advantage and akumatizing his own son. It's literally Cat Blanc all over again. So basically, there is no other way around it. Whenever he finds out the truth about Adrian, no matter what, he's never going to learn his lesson. He's never going to develop and turn into an actual sympathetic villain, all because of his wife being dead. I don't even think he wants to save his wife from death. I think he just wants to destroy the world. That's it. That's really it. That's all he wants. He's a selfish, manipulative, abusive psychopath who wants to put an end to the planet Earth for no good reason. And the fact that Gabriel is never acknowledged as a heartless monster in universe just makes me want to eat the rotten asshole of a roadkill skunk and down it with beer. Sympathetic villain, my ass. <sighs> You know what? I'm gonna try to be fair. Let's talk about Gabby's good side for a while. Gorazilla, aka Gabby's best episode. Simply because the writers, for the first time ever, actually made him very complex and sympathetic. In this episode, Gabby is finally starting to suspect that Adrian is Cat Noir. After Adrian escapes, Gorilla and Natalia goes out to look for him. Gorilla tried his best, but he ended up being sh by Gabriel. He transforms into Gorazilla, basically a combination of King Kong and Godzilla. Honestly, he looks more like a combination of King Kong and Hulk, so just call him the Incredible Kong. Has a nice ring to it. Anyway, during this scene, Ladybug attempts to catch Adrian as soon as Gorzilla lets him go, but she wasn't able to do so. Since Adrian cannot transform out in the open, he is now falling to his death. This leads to Gabriel having an actual believable conflict. Should he go to plan and take Ladybug's Miraculous, or should he let her go to save his son? Hawkmoth, without knowing for sure that Adrian is Cat Noir, begs him to transform. When he doesn't, Hawkmoth, fearing that his son might die, orders Gorzilla to let go of Ladybug. This scene truly makes him a sympathetic villain, because for once, I can actually understand him. I understand why he would do that. Instead of going according to plan, he did the right thing. He let go of his enemy. He failed his biggest chance of winning, but that's fine, because he did that to save Adrian. For the first time ever, he did something for his family. Overall, this episode is pretty good, mostly because of Gabby. They managed to make him sympathetic by showcasing that he actually cares about his son. Another episode where the writers did Gabriel right is Glaciator 2. I want you to know that if you needed to, you could talk to me. It may be short and simple, but they were able to demonstrate that Gabriel cares for his son, which of course makes him sympathetic. Any more episodes where Gabriel is sympathetic? No, not really. That's it. That's really it. <laughs> In my humble opinion, there are only two episodes, two episodes where he is empathetic for real. There are several episodes where he is unsympathetic and the rest of the episodes, he's just a plot device. Obviously, two episodes isn't enough to make him a fully sympathetic villain and a good parent. He shouldn't be called a good parent. He shouldn't even be considered a parent at all because almost everything that he has done to Adrian and done for Adrian are not parent-ish. Most of the time, he doesn't even act like a parent to him. Gabriel should be referred to as a kidnapper with a tiny bit of Stockholm Syndrome. That's exactly how he behaves around Adrian, a guy who keeps him locked up in his house and very rarely gives him any sort of love and care. Gabriel is the freak. 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 
Bottom line, Gabriel Agreste is not sympathetic. Very rarely he is sympathetic, but mostly he's a heartless monster and a boring plot device. This guy is without a doubt the worst person in Miraculous Lady Trash. Changed my mind. Actually, you know what? No, don't change my mind. Because I know and you know that no one in this show can be a worse human being than this idiot. Chloe's mom at least learned to love and care for Chloe. And she was able to love her husband and decided to stay. Because she realized that she and her family made a lot of mistakes in the past. What matters is to fix them. By far, these guys are the worst people in the show. But these two were able to reconcile. Gabby has not. He is the only remaining terrible person in the show who still hasn't harmonized. If these two awful parents of Chloe could do it, so can he. But nope, he just sucks, and I'll never sympathize with him. I'd rather have a buffalo take a diarrhea dump in my ear. He's honestly even worse than Marinette when it comes to being a person and as a character. I'm never taking that back. But objectively speaking, Gabriel isn't the worst character. It's still Misty. Unlike Gabriel, Misty doesn't add anything to the show. She doesn't really do anything relevant and or memorable at all. She could have been easily replaced by anyone. Anyone. And nothing will change. That's why Misty is still, in my opinion, the worst character of Miraculous Lady Trash. In conclusion, Gabriel Agreste aka Hawk Moth, aka Shadow Moth, aka Sh Moth is an awful villain and an awful character and an awful person. He's an abuser, he's a manipulator, he's just horrible! Look, I'm fine with Gabriel acting like this. I'm fine if Gabriel acts like a heartless, unlikable freak. As long as that's the whole point of his character. But the problem with this guy is that he is meant to be a sympathetic villain. He is a type of villain that we are supposed to be agreeing with. We're supposed to think that his intentions are not really that wrong, despite of his actions being objectively wrong, by giving us a reason. But that reason gets little to no explanation. During season 1, he was just a plot device. But the writers decided to give him more character depth, and they unintentionally failed miserably. Which is just so frustrating to think that this type of villain could have worked. They could have made Gabby realize that what he's been doing is just so selfish and wrong. Make him regret the things that he has done for months, if not years or whatever. And most importantly, give his motivation more rational sense. But no, we don't get that. We don't get any of that. He sucks as a villain, he sucks as a parent, his ambitions are unclear, and he is never getting any of my respect and empathy ever again after Dearest Family and Ephemeral. This guy is truly irredeemable. Not even normal pills can save him. Fun fact, even though I hate Mary so goddamn much with a burning passion, I'm still giving her a chance because I'm very well aware that she is still a young teenager who has so much room to grow. The same thing can be said for Chloe. She's still young and has a lot to learn. But Gabriel is a grown-ass man. He's completely done with school. So he has absolutely no excuses for causing the apocalypse twice with nonsensical ambitions. His empathetic moments are extremely few. And I mean extremely few. I'm never giving him a chance ever again. Or maybe I will if the writers really are going to make him realize his mistakes and change into a good person and an actual good parent. But who am I kidding? That's a f fairy tale scenario. It's hard to believe that Chloe, who is still in the stage of growing up, is considered irredeemable. But Gabriel, an adult who treats his family like who has endangered a lot of innocent lives every single day, and who is actually planning on destroying the world, is not irredeemable, but is considered sympathetic. You, you know. I never really wanted to say this to any character that I've known in my life because I just can't afford it. It's too harsh. Every single character that I've witnessed in stories that I've read, movies that I've watched, TV shows that I've seen, they never made me say this particular sentence because none of them are terrible enough. But for this occasion, since Gabriel is worthy enough for this honor, let me just say it right here right now. Gabriel, I hope you die. I hope you die! I hope you f***ing die!